And he's yet to score this season. That would have been the perfect time to have done it. But he just dragged it wide of that left-hand post. Robinson with the free kick looking for Gittins. Gittins won it. Directs it to McFarlane. And they just slipped on shooting. Andy McFarlane. It was always at a difficult height for the big man. He just spooned it over. Gibbs. Determined look about that play and he finds Andy Gurney. It's a great chance for Gurney. And he hit it straight at Chris McKenzie. Now Gurney to McCall. McCall or centre looking for McFarlane. Oh, that's a superb save by McKenzie. Torquay thought they had the ball in the net, but that goalkeeper produced a magnificent save to deny them. McFarlane controls with a shove in the back from Smith. Torquay take the free kick quickly. Here's Gurney. Oh, he's knocked it the wrong side of the goal. It's Andy Gurney's second chance, almost identical position. And again, he cannot find the net. It's opened up for him. And it just isn't Andy Gurney's day. He scored from range on a number of occasions for Torquay this season. But he just doesn't have his shooting boots on when he needs them most. Center looking for McFarlane. He's onside. Has he scored? He has done. Andy McFarlane has got one goal back for Torquay. The chance is still on of automatic promotion. The ball came into McFarlane, the Orient defenders stood and stared. McFarlane took the initiative and beat Chris McKenzie for his sixth goal of the season. It's Orient two, Torquay one. Baker goes ahead of him. Baker might take it past Vasey. Vasey brings him down. And Torquay will play the rest of this game Without their goalkeeper, Ken Vasey has been sent off with minutes to go. The ball was played through to Joe Baker. Ken Vasey pulled him down. And Torquay will be down to 10 men. Ling, Martin Ling looks lined up for this one. He fires it. That's an excellent save from Andy Gurney. The goalkeeper has been sent off, replaced by the fullback, and you wouldn't have been able to tell the difference with that save. Every player is in the Orient half as Gibbs delivers the corner, looking for Watson! It's hit the post! Clayton's there, and away by Warren. Now Gibbs to Robinson. It's still there. Will they force it in? The referee, how is he going to decide what to give here? Oh, a number of opportunities but resilient defending from Orient. Torquay sets siege, that Orient penalty area drives it across and away. And that's full time. Torquay United have lost here today. It looks as though they'll be in the playoffs. They still have a chance of going up to Division Two, but it's just going to take a little bit longer. They played out of their skins in the second half with only 10 men, but they didn't get the result on the day. It's finished. Leighton Orient 2, Torquay United 1. It's Lincoln who joined Notts County and Macclesfield in Division 2 next season. They took full advantage of Torquay's defeat as they beat struggling Brighton by two goals to one. Fleming and Thorpe gave the home side the cushion they needed with two goals in the space of three second-half minutes. Brighton grabbed a late consolation near the end, but it wasn't enough to stop Lincoln's promotion party. Well, Colchester also won, which means Torquay finished fifth and faced Scarborough in the playoffs, the first leg at the McCain Stadium next Sunday, the return at Plainmore the following Wednesday evening. Coverage, of course, here on West Country. I'm very disappointed for all the supporters that have travelled up here today because they were magnificent. There was lots of people here and it would have nice to have, you know, finish the job off today. But it's not the case. We've got another chance, you know, and uh, hopefully we'll be man enough and strong enough to take it. We've done so well all season to get here. You know, a lot of people have written us off all season, and um, I think we've, we've proved a few people wrong. 
But um, you know, we're back. We're in the playoffs now, and we've got to, you know set our minds straight on the playoffs, get to Wembley, and get them to Division Two where we belong. If we start feeling sorry for ourselves, then uh, we've got no hope. You know, we've, we've got to pick ourselves up, up dust ourselves off, and uh, be positive about the playoffs. You know, all the lads obviously naturally disappointed. But, uh, you know, it's not a time to feel sorry for yourselves. We've got to know, keep our heads up high and be positive about it. Well, you have to feel sorry for Torquay United, dropping out of the top three on the final day of the season. But they've won promotion at Wembley before. No reason why they can't do it again. Burnley is going. It's Jeff Welsh. Well, when this game was arranged, Torquay United thought they'd be playing in it as a newly promoted side. But defeat at Orient on Saturday rounded off what proved to be a disappointing weekend for the West Country. Plymouth Argyle were condemned to the third division after a 2-1 defeat by Burnley, sparking emotional scenes at Turf Moor. Ten Plymouth players are now out of contract, and that was high on the agenda when Argyle manager Mick Jones met club directors today. Torquay needed a point for automatic promotion to Division 2, but defeat at Orient means they now have to beat Scarborough over two legs if they want to reach the Wembley playoff final. Exeter's league campaign also ended on a losing note. They went down 3-1 at home to Macclesfield. Well, I'm now joined by the Torquay head coach, Kevin Hodges. Kevin, with the playoffs coming up at the weekend, I guess this match is really the last thing you wanted. No, not really. It's, uh, it's an opportunity to give some of the players that haven't played uh, for a couple of weeks a game and, uh, more importantly, some of our youngsters, because uh, it's a big time for some of them, decision time, and it's an ideal game for us to, to involve them in. Obviously, the Torquay players were very disappointed to miss out on an automatic promotion place, but what's been the mood in the camp today? Well, naturally, we, we were all deflated uh, over the weekend, but uh, we were back training today and, uh, you know, gradually get ourselves back into it, pick ourselves up, because uh, we've got it all to play for. You know, there's an opportunity for us to get to Wembley, but first and foremost, we've got two very difficult games against Scarborough, home and away, starting on uh, Sunday away, so, um, you know, we, we've got everything to play for. Is it hard to motivate the players because they've already played a very long season, 46 games in the league, and now you've got another two? Well, naturally, it is at the stage of the season where, you know, tiredness, tiredness does start to come in and creep in. But uh, when you've got something to aim for, then uh, I think all the tiredness disappears. And okay. hopefully that'll be the case with our lads. <laughs> OK, Kevin, well, best of luck for the playoffs. Thank you. I better not say best of luck uh, for tonight, otherwise we'll be getting letters from uh, Exeter City supporters. Well, that's it from here at Playmore. Kick-off is at 7.30. Thanks, Jeff. Exeter Rugby Club suffered a major... ...in the first leg of the playoffs. That's because they're going to have to do it the hard way after they came so agonisingly close to automatic promotion at the weekend. The nightmare at Leighton Orient started early when John Gittens conceded a penalty and Dean Smith converted. The draw needed for promotion seemed further away when Craig Masco fired a second. The girls fought back and Andy McFarlane gave them hope but instead, it's the playoffs which beckon. Before that, though, tonight's opponents are Exeter in the Devon Bowl final. The Grecians ended their season on Saturday with a 3-1 defeat by promoted Macclesfield. Yes, Exeter City of the season. We'll talk about that match briefly in a moment, but first, it's the playoffs, of course, that occupy the goals fans' minds. Gary Clayton, Torquay midfielder, is here with me. Gary, you've never played at Wembley, you've come so close, but you really didn't want to go there this time, did you? No, we like we wanted to get a point up at Orient, but like this says, it weren't a beat, so we just got to do it hard way and go to Scarborough. There's been some people saying you blew it on Saturday. Is that the way you saw it? Well, we did two early goals. Well, one at fifth minute, weren't it, and one at twentieth. So it was always hard coming back. But at the end of the day, we were posting it last minute. If that had gone in, we were up. So really, it weren't our day. Because at the end of the day, it was just one goal keeps the difference between you and Division Three and Division Two, isn't it? Well, that's it. But what is it? I think we've only won one in his last eight games. So it were here for us. It's, it were up to us, and like the end of the day, we didn't do it. Question is now: Can you pick yourselves up and, and get through the playoffs? It's going to be three tough games if you are going to go up. Well, it's going to be hard. We've played at Scarborough in January and they beat us 4-1. But we didn't play bad that night. So we're all, you know, we're on a downer at the moment today in training. But like you say, we've just got to pick ourselves up now and just, learn. when is it? Sunday, isn't it? Look forward to Sunday. You've had a bit of experience in the playoffs, been on the sidelines with Plymouth Argyle just two years ago as well. Can you pass on some of that experience to the younger players here? Well, they always say experience counts, but if we get the Wembley, I don't like that. I've never played there. I've always been injured and cup tied there, so I think I'll be as nervous as anybody. Just hope we can get there. And of course, it's the Devon Professional Bowl here this evening. Exeter City, the visitors, 7 30 the kickoff, and a good game in action. But from Playmore, back to the studio. Thank you, Hamish. The 1 0 in the final of the Devon Bowl. 
Exeter came close to striking the first blow at Plainmore. Matthew Gregg was forced to pull off a good save to deny Barry McConnell. But just as the game looked to be heading towards extra time, Torquay got the winner. Tony Beddo making no mistake from close range. The Exeter team, though, were clearly unhappy with the goal and continued to complain after the final whistle. They were upset because they felt the ball had gone out of play when it was crossed by Steve Tilley in the lead-up to Tony Beddoe's goal. And let's get straight off to the McCain Stadium where Torquay United have been playing Scarborough in the third division playoff semi-final first leg. The goal's looking for a good result to take back to play more next Wednesday. And watching the action for us, Seth Conway. to chase the pass back isn't good and Campbell's round the keeper and Mick Pierce has given a penalty Ken Basie brings down Neil Campbell and Basie who was sent off at Orient last week for bringing a player down but again John Gittins for the second week running put through a weak back pass again Basie brings down the man 18 minutes gone Gareth Williams will not be Ken Basie the talkie keeper saves it and the supporters behind the goal delighted. It was a poor penalty from Williams. It gave Vasey every chance, and the keeper made the save. Clayton forward. Ronnie Jack has got some pace, and he's behind the defence now. They'll have to go alone, and he's done it superbly. Ronnie Jack, with just 23 minutes gone, has given Torquay the lead. No wonder Gibson McFarlane go to him because Jack had to do it all by himself. He got behind the defence, and to the delight of the Torquay fans, he put it past Tony Elliott. It's Scarborough nil, Torquay United 1. And to Gibbs. Kay's head up, only partially away. Here's Gurney. Now McCall, to danger man Rodney Jack. Well, he's crossing, looking for McFarlane. Rocket gets the diving header away, now Snowden. Again, they give him Rodney Jack plenty of room, and he can exploit it. And that cross, though, not quite accurate enough to find McFarlane. Williams tries to pick out Rocket. Vasey's missed it. It'll fall for Snowden. Takes a deflection, and into Vasey, who does get it at the second attempt. And then had to deal with Campbell. Him in over the top. So deflected out to Snowden. His shot. Got a touch on the way through, and Basie will manage to keep hold in the end. Gurney and Gittins making a bit of a meal trying to get the ball away. And Brody just being obstructed by Andy Gurney. Be an indirect free kick near to the penalty area. Just five minutes to go to half time as Brody's free kick comes in. It's a poor effort. Get another chance of swinging the ball in with Williams, but he gives it away to Worrell. A real comedy of errors, but Williams has got it again. It's tempting for Basie, he didn't make it. Jason Rocket did, though, and he brings Scarra back on level terms. The goalkeeper thought the ball was his, but he couldn't get there. Jason Rocket, though, the central defender, did. And it's now Scarborough 1, Torquay United 1. Watson and Robinson all up for this corner. It's coming towards Alex Watson. A commanding header and John Giddens gets the final touch to put Torquay 2-1 in front. It's their second away goal and it might be crucial as we go into the second leg on Wednesday. Watson made the towering header and it came off Giddens midriff and beat Elliott. Scarborough 1, Torquay 2. Long throw looking towards Rocket. Almost comes to Steve Brody. And it wasn't far away from that. The Scarborough centre forward. They were just agonisingly close to him. And Andy McFarlane setting off on a real charge. It's a great run from McFarlane. And brought to an end by Tony Elliott. And Andy McFarlane does like to get the ball and run. And on this occasion, just overran it slightly, gave the goalkeeper enough of an opportunity. Bennett. 
ball looking for Brody. Basie spilt it. Can Brody find a man? He has done. And Gareth Williams puts it into the side netting. Much to the disappointment of three quarters of this ground, who thought he might have sneaked it past Vasey into the corner. He hadn't. Sutherland to Bennett. Here's Gittins. And he's not too good facing his own goal. He's better when he's playing it forward like that to McFarlane. And he's finished it superbly. Andy McFarlane has really sealed this game for Torquay. They lead 3-1. The big man was sent forward. And he really buried it past Elliott. It's Scarborough 1, Torquay 3. 3-1, three, is that more than you could have hoped for at the start? I think so, yes. Uh, I think when you come here, you just want to keep it tight and we'd have been happy going back with the draw. Uh, to score three away goals is magnificent. And it all got underway uh, with that goal from Rodney Jack, who unfortunately had to go off injured. What's his status? I'm not too sure. I think it's just uh, a bit of a knock, but uh, I'm sure he'll be ready to go on Wednesday. Now, Andy McFarlane uh, led the line up front after Jack went off and really buried that third, didn't he? It did, you know, we're looking at 2-1, keep it nice and tight, and Andy's got a nice breakaway and uh, a great finish, so it gives us a nice little cushion for the second leg. You say it's given them a cushion, but just how tough do you think Scarborough will be now you've seen them here for that second leg? I think it will be tough. I mean, we saw today, you know, we uh, had a few narrow escapes and uh, they missed a penalty, so it wasn't all our, our game. So, uh, yeah, they, they'll be going all out for it. They've got nothing to lose and they'll come and attack us. Uh, it's a one-off purely, but um, I think we can, we can do it. How did you see that penalty when it was given? Uh, I thought the lads dived over Kenny's hands and uh, I was very surprised when the referee, certainly as experienced as, uh, as Mr Pearce, uh, gave it. So, uh, unfortunately, the lads missed it. Unfortunately for us, he's missed it and, uh, and we were allowed back in the game. And there were also a couple of claims for Torquay, Paul Gibbs in the first half and then Rodney Jack in the second half when he went down. Yeah, I think the referees had a look at it and he, he's then decided he's not going to give any more penalties uh, after the first one caused a few ructions. But um, oh, we're just delighted to have scored three and, uh, and coming back to play more with uh, a nice lead. And particularly for your supporters who've made the long journey, they're in good voice, weren't they? That's right. After the disappointment of the Leighton Orient game, it was good to see so many of them up here. So uh, we just hope to finish it off at Glimmer on Wednesday with a nice crowd, a great atmosphere. And then we can maybe uh, go, up to, go to Wembley and give them a nice day out. A great day for Torquay. Firm favourites now for Wembley. The other third division semi-final is nicely poised. Barnet 1-0 winners today against... Oh, Mark. Good evening. Yes, games don't come much bigger than this for Torquay United after Sunday's magnificent 3-1 first leg victory at Scarborough. A near capacity crowd is expected here tonight and most United fans will be anticipating their second trip to Wembley in just seven years. Torquay know what it's like to win at Wembley. On a memorable May night in 1991, they beat Blackpool in a dramatic penalty shootout. And they go into tonight's game as firm favourites for a return to the venue of legends on Friday week after demolishing Scarborough in the away leg of their semi-final. The disappointment of missing out on promotion in the final game of the regular season was put firmly behind them as they coasted to a comfortable victory at the McCain Stadium. One of the heroes of that game, goalkeeper Ken Vasey, will have mixed feelings if the side do get to Wembley. He'll be forced to miss the match against Barnet or Colchester through suspension. Well, with me here at Playmore is Talk United's head coach, Kevin Hodges. Uh, Kevin, a lot of fans are saying you're already at Wembley, but it's not quite as simple as that, is it? No, I certainly don't think so. Uh, obviously, we've done ourselves a lot of good up at uh, Scarborough on Sunday, but uh, we can't afford to take anything for granted. Uh, we can't afford any complacency to set in at all. And uh, we've got another job to do this evening. Come on, though, be honest. You've had one or two thoughts about Wembley already, haven't you? Well, in my dreams, yes. You know, naturally, it's, uh, it's uh, players and managers, you know, ambition to get to Wembley. Mm. And, uh, you know, obviously, we put ourselves in a very good position, but uh, an awful lot of football still to be played. Now, we saw Tiverton at Wembley last week. A great day for them, a great day for the town. What would it mean for Torquay to get back to the Twin Towers again? Well, to be fair, you know, over the last few years, the, the supporters haven't had a lot to cheer about. And uh, I feel the players this year have worked extremely hard to have got where they have and have brought a little bit of pride back to the place. And, um, you know, there'd be no better uh, ending to, to, to go to Wembley. And we've got everything to play for this evening. All the incentives are there. And uh, I, I just hope that we can complete the job. 
It is going to be a great night for Torquay. I gather the uh, the Scarborough managers already tried to psych you out a bit tonight. Yes, yeah, so to be fair, they, they've got nothing to lose this evening. And uh, as I say, there's still a lot to play for. If they get an early goal, then uh, they'll be back in the tie. But uh, if we was to get the early goal, then ho hopefully that would uh, uh, cause problems for them. And, um, you know, we've got to go out there and perform well, be solid, be well organised and uh, not give anything away early on. And good news that Rodney Jack is uh, fit and unchanged side for Torquay. And uh, good luck for tonight. And let's hope you're leading out Torquay at Wembley in, what is it, uh, nine days' time. I certainly hope so. Well, a great night in prospect for Torquay United. Don't forget, we've got extended highlights for you in a soccer special at 11.45 tonight. Well, now on to cricket. Day one of Somerset's county championship match against Middlesex at... Of the finances over, I think you would have got something like £5,000 prize money if you'd gone up automatically. Looking at this tonight and going up through the playoffs, it's going to be worth a few more pounds than that, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's nice, but uh, it's a bigger headache. I mean, if we'd have gone straight up, we'd have been all finished now and all enjoying ourselves. And t today it's been hectic, the phone been going and everybody else. And as I say, tonight you can see we're going to have a bumper crowd. I think we'll beat all, all um, times now. We'll, we'll get over the six, I think. I, the way they're queuing up now, it's fantastic. And finally, the fans are all coming to see a win. Are they going to see a win and are we going to Wembley? Well, talking to Kevin, I mean, uh, and, and he's in charge of the team, that he's not going to take it easy. I mean, we, we got two goals in the league. They've only got to score three, mine, and that can happen in any uh, game. So I, I think we'll do it because they, I can't see us standing still and not scoring. But um, it'll be a good game and a tight game. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. Marvin Benny, thank you very much. If you are going to come to play more, you've got just under an hour. The kickoff is 7.45. If you're not, you'll get live coverage on BBC Radio Devon, and the programme starts immediately after Spotlight at 7 o'clock. As you say, thank you. Yes, a very good evening to you from Playmore. Another red-letter day for Torquay United as they aim for their third appearance at Wembley. Seven years ago, they won promotion there after a dramatic penalty shootout against Blackpool. Now, they stand on the brink once again. Torquay were at their Sunday best up at Scarborough with an away day performance that makes them favourites for the final. A gem from Jack, a golden goal from Gittins and a touch of McFarlane magic put United in control at the McCain. It was the result of the round, a three goal demolition job that gives the goals a good leg up on the promotion ladder. So Torquay well and truly in the driving seat but taking nothing for granted. A near capacity crowd here at Playmore, a great atmosphere building and sampling it for us, our commentator, Martin Dean. Well, a tremendous welcome, as you might expect, for these two teams who have, in fact, much in common in terms of the progress they've made in recent seasons. Two years ago, they occupied the bottom two runs of the Football League ladder with only Stevenage's lack of facilities saving Torquay from a drop into the conference. But uh, Torquay have had their share of success prior to that, of course. They'll be looking to book their third Wembley appearance in nine years tonight. But despite their 3-1 advantage from the first leg, head coach Kevin Hodges is taking no chances. He's named a full-strength lineup. Well, top scorer Rodney Jack passed a late fitness test on a knee injury to take his place up front. And if he can add to his 14-goal tally, that would surely signal the end for Scarborough. Well, Gareth Williams leads the scoring charts for Scarborough with 15 goals, but hitting the back of the net on their travels has been something of a problem for them all season. They've averaged just a goal a game away from home. Well, they won't be helped tonight by the absence of two of their most experienced campaigners, Ian Snodden and Gary Bennett, who are both ruled out after being injured on Sunday. Paul Atkin and Troy Bennett come in to replace them, while Steve Heckingbottom and Chris Tate are recalled as Mick Wadsworth opts for the attacking lineup he needs. Well, tonight's referee is Bob Harris from Oxfordshire. Just checking with his officials before getting what promises to be quite a game underway. It's a warm, balmy evening here in Torquay. 
A little bit of uh, mist in the air. That's quite pleasant conditions for both these sets of players. A lot of tension, of course, out there on the pitch. And Scarborough desperately in need of an early goal. Torquay anxious to avoid that. Gary Clayton getting the ball away up towards Andy McFarlane. Led better with the header. And now McCall to Clayton. Part of that very experienced midfield, of course, that Torquay boast. And they could be crucial tonight. Andy Gurney putting the ball out. He got a little nudge in the back, in fact, from Gareth Williams, so Torquay will get a free kick. And Andy Gurney has scored a few spectacular goals for Torquay this season. And he'll be uh, looking to get forward, I'm sure, when he gets the opportunity. There's another man who knows his way to goal. John Gittings, of course, getting one of the three on Sunday. Free kick aimed towards... Steve McCall, now Gurney getting it forward for McFarlane. Troy Bennett making the challenge. Ball out of play. Troy Bennett coming into the centre of defence tonight. This is Gurney giving Rodney Jack a first touch. Jack turning well. And uh, in the end tangling with Gareth Williams, just a little bit of a dust up between them. That's not like Rodney, is it? All sorts of uh, things happening here. Andy McFarlane being pushed away. Bob Harris is going to have to step in. He doesn't want things bowling over in these uh, opening minutes. He only played a minute and 45 seconds. Well, he's uh, wanting a word to think with Andy McFarlane. Gareth Williams. Carlin being called back over. It's as if Mr. Harris is going to reach for the yellow cards. Well, I'm not riding on this game, of course, but uh, players need to be careful because uh, under the regulations, anyone who gets sent off tonight would automatically miss the final. Williams are going to have to watch their step from now on. Uh, Tony Elliott taking the free kick. Coming off Jason Rocket. Torquay will get the throw. Farland getting the flick on. Clayton was fouled and more trouble breaking out well this is all getting a little bit out of hand really in these opening stages and Mr Harris now wanting a word with Neil Campbell and I think uh, Campbell definitely the culprit on that occasion and we've had just over three play three minutes and uh, Mr Harris has booked a player a minute so far Maintains that sort of progress. It could be an interesting second half. Well, they looking to get the nod on. Looking just allowing it to run out. Well, if it's tense on the pitch, it's tense there as well. Gittings penalised, a little shove in the back on Chris Tate. Bennett with the free kick. It's headed away by Watson. Heckingbottom looking to drive the ball in. And now Worrell curling it forward, but Torquay defending well in numbers at the moment. They need to concentrate. Jeremy Robinson putting it out for the throw. John Kay is taking over a skipper tonight. He's come across to take it. And short for Brody. And now Kay again. Brody looking to curl the cross in. Charge down though. Now Ledbetter. Now a charge for Rodney Bradjack to get away. It's 
got away from his man as he taken it too far in front of him. He's gone past the keeper. Can he finish? Yes, he can. And Rodney Jack, surely, surely, puts Torquay on their way to Wembley. Well, that was just the start that Torquay United wanted. Just a little over five minutes on the clock. And Rodney Jack puts them one up on the night. Or one up on aggregate. Well, it was that slip by Troy Bennett that let him in. And Jack kept his nerve, kept his calm. He went round Elliott. Looked to have pushed it a little too wide, but slotting it in very calmly indeed. So, a tremendous start for Torquay United. Rodney Jack, whose fitness was in doubt, of course, went right up until the start. Delivering the goods. And, um, as you might expect now, the Torquay fans in great voice. Well, there was always the danger, of course, that Scarborough would uh, pay for the fact that they'd uh, push so many people forward. This is Bennett curling it in towards Campbell. Paul Gibbs will get it away. And Scarborough, no, they've got to throw everyone forward now. Bennett with a cross end in towards Rocket. It was Giddings who got it away. And now Gareth Williams, and Paul is with him. Took all inside. And a little chip across from Chris Tate, just causing a problem or two. Paul Key get it away now. And again, it's Rodney Jack. And he's got away from Atkin this time. Wow, Rodney Jack looking to deliver again. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And Scarborough find themselves in all sorts of trouble. Well, seven minutes gone. And Torquay United 2 0 up on the night. 5 1 on aggregate. And Scarborough are going to have to score six now. Well, he got round Atkin that time, squeezed it in from the narrowest of angles. And what a start for Torquay United and Rodney Jack. Hodges doesn't look that happy. He ought to be pretty pleased by now, didn't he? <laughs> he's uh, signalling that he's uh, going to be a little more satisfied if they get a third. Well, I think that's just being greedy, Kevin. Okay, then with the throw and the return from Ben Worrell. Gittings attacking the ball, but uh, referee also deciding he was attacking the player as well. He thinks he's going to get a yellow card for that now. I think uh, John Gittings complaining with some justification, really. It did seem to me as if he was lunging for the ball. He certainly caught the man, no doubt about that, but uh, whether there was any uh, real intent in that. He is going for it. Well, I wonder whether that was a mistimed challenge. Mr Harris doesn't think so. Warning everyone to cool it. He's going to have a word with his assistant now, in fact. See more cards being brandished. Well, he now wants to have a word with Jamie Robinson, who's going to get a yellow card. Well, they're coming out like confetti, aren't they? And so, Jamie Robinson becomes the fifth player to enter that notebook. More of a novel than notebook, the way Mr. Harris is going. And now we can get back to the main business, which of course is the free kick. Mr. Harris wanting to reposition the wall now. Well, it is all getting a little bit fussy, really. Now Williams and Brody poised. It'll be Brody to take it, curling it in. Oh, good save. Now Ken Vasey. Stretching to tip that one over. Getting a little pat, a little smile from Ken Vasey. Knows he's done well there. Little faint from Williams. Brody curling it over. Good save from Vasey. Robinson getting it forward. Good, powerful header. And now Ledbetter. Headed away by Rocket. Ledbetter charging down Kay's attempted clearance. And now Jack showing some nice skills. Well, he's toying with him a bit, isn't he? 
to Steve McCall. Right down the line for Andy McFarlane. And McFarlane getting a nudge. Hacking bottom will be spoken to this time. fans chanting we want six and Paul Gibbs has come across to take the free kick curl it in with that left foot of his pumped in towards Gittings on the far post good catch though from Elliot who wants to get it away quickly in towards Campbell who, uh, wraps into Robinson or does him well Robinson is the man penalised it feels as if that might have been six of one and half a dozen of the other. And Troy Bennett then looking to curl the free kick in. And there's a gone in this time. Well, I suppose there was a certain inevitability about the goal from Scarborough. Bennett curling the free kick in. And it was Jason Rocket who got up for the header to put it past Ken Vasey. Rocket getting his fourth goal of the season. Pulling one back for Scarborough. But of course, Torquay still leading 2 1 on the night. 5 2 on aggregate. It will give Scarborough a little bit of hope. Long throw from Gibbs. McFarlane. At the fall for McCall. Journey is outside him. Oh, Gary Clayton. McCall forward for Rodney Jack. Little flick on intended for McFarlane. And Atkin gets it away. Well, Atkin, picture of concentration. He needs to be. He knows that uh, his mistake not to put his side in trouble. Well, Rodney Jack was caught again. See another yellow card and a red one this time. Well, Gareth Williams goes for a second bookable offence. Well, his game ends early. And Scarborough's task made all the more difficult. But it really was a bad lunge on Rodney Jack. I think he can't really argue with a second yellow card. And of course, he now has his marching orders. Paul Gibbs with the free kick curled in towards McFarlane.